Hi, I'm James, and today I have this on my desk, which is the Acer Revo RN86 uh, compact or small form factor desktop computer. Now, this particular system is one that I've got in, which is going out to a customer tomorrow, and just during the setup, I wanted to take a quick look at it and share my initial thoughts with you. Uh, so this particular system cost, I believe it was £329 from box.co.uk, they haven't sponsored or provided any discount on this. Um, this is just me taking a look at it since I have it here. And it is around, it's not quite square, but it is around 20 centimetres or 8 inches uh, in each diameter, uh, sorry, in each direction, and around 4 centimetres or inch and a half thick. On the front we have headphone, uh, line-in or microphone, USB-C, which can also be used to charge devices, uh, so USB uh, power delivery for phones, I believe, and a USB 3 port on the front. And turning around to take a look at the back, we have good connectivity with a display port, HDMI port, USB 3, and a pair of USB 2 ports, another USB 3, Kensington lock, so if you're using this in an office environment, you can secure it to the desk, uh, Ethernet and DC jack because this does use a fairly compact external power supply. Specification wise we get a Core i3 at 9100T so a quad core 4 thread 35 watt processor and we also get 4 gigabytes of RAM, which is a bit disappointing, but also a fairly generous uh, 512 gigabyte SSD. Uh, this is a M2 NVMe drive, and we also get 802.11ax, sorry, AC wireless, not AX, and we have USB uh, 3.2 for that USB-C port on the front. So what we've done is we're just going to, because we only get 4 gigabytes of RAM in this, we are going to add another 4. So there is a single screw here which I have removed. And with that done, we can then slide the top of the case forwards. This removes the front bezel. And we can then take the lid off the system. From here... If we want to uh, remove the SSD, that's actually very easy to do. So there is this little pull-up release for the M2 slot. And the SSD can then be wiggled out and lifted up out of the slot. This, as I say, is a PCIe NVMe type drive. To replace it, we just slot it back in and press this back down. There is only a single slot in here and there is no caddy for a 2.5 inch drive. I have seen some other designs of this system uh, where you get a second M2 slot and a 2.5 inch SATA drive, but in this model that is not the case. To get the RAM is very slightly more difficult, but not much. And first of all, we have to remove the fan, which is done by pressing in on these two clips and lifting it straight up. Now, the DIMM in here is four gigabytes. It is DDR4-2666. However, it runs at the maximum officially supported speed of this chip, which is 2400. So, to fit my upgrade, we are just going to press in and down with the extra 4 gigs of RAM. Like I say, only a 2400 module, but that is all that is required for this system. And then we are just going to line up and refit the fan, clipping it down into place. With that done, all we then need to do... Oh, and if you want to try a wireless card, it is here. You could fit a Intel uh, AX200 card if you wanted to give Wi-Fi 6 support. So what we need to do is slot this back on, making sure it sits in that top channel, and all press down correctly into place. Slide it back, 
and refit the screw. I believe uh, it is an LGA processor in this as well. Uh, so if we had removed the heatsink, it would be possible to replace the processor. However, you would want to stick with a 35 watt CPU uh, just because of the thermal limits of this machine. So firing up the machine, one thing I have noticed is the power button is a little bit fiddly. Uh, if you press it up the top here, it's a little bit, so it'll press in, but actually the button itself is here. But uh, firing it up, noise levels, you know, pretty low. Uh, it obviously has that fan which does run all the time and is audible. Uh, but in general use, noise levels are pretty low. If you push the processor or the integrated graphics, it will ramp up. But in general use, you aren't really going to hear it. Uh, Acer do also include a wireless keyboard and mouse in the box, which again, at this price point, is quite nice. Often I would expect to find wired examples in there. Now, switching over to the system itself, and I've created just a test account for signing in and taking a look at things. And first thing we can see, we have Norton uh, Security Ultra installed, and I would be taking that straight off. I do not want to get started with that and I would not be recommending it to the user, so we will be removing that. Um, otherwise, we have a fairly regular install. So the version that ships on this machine is uh, 1909. Uh, so this is going to be fairly close to end of support, I believe. So we will be getting this upgraded to 20 H, uh, sorry, 21 H1 before taking the system to the customer. And we can see the 8 gigabytes of RAM there. Um, taking a look at the system specifications, again, we can see here we have the Core i3 and it detects as an 8100T, but it is listed here, the 9100T. I believe that's just an error in uh, the CPU Z version I'm using here. And we can see having installed that memory module, we are getting dual channel memory 2400. Uh, I did test this with the single memory module and it was running 2400 speeds. And otherwise, as we'd expect, the Intel UHD 630 graphics and so on. So turning our attention back to the pre-installed software, and we have a few Acer tools. So product registration, some configuration bits and pieces. So this is perhaps not the absolute cleanest Windows install. Um, my temptation may well be with this to just erase it and do a clean install with Windows 10 21 H1. Um, you know, Magic Software, Firefox, I'd rather actually just you know, strip this back and uh, set it up as a new machine um, rather than go through and remove these things. And with Windows 10 now, that is an incredibly quick thing to do.